Hello everybody, my name is Chris, and welcome back to more Mass Effect. Now, in the last episode, we had touched down on Eden Prime, our mission to retrieve a beacon. A beacon of Prothean technology. Prothean... Protheans, we heard, were a, a race of being that have been gone from the universe for 50,000 years. A long, long time. So, this, this beacon... Their technology... We learn from the captain is what everything is based on like our ship space travel weaponry everything is based on prothean tech so the fact that we unearthed a prothean another prothean artifact on well anywhere in general is a huge find not just for you know the the races and the the alliance and everything but for humanity itself too right so it was a big deal it was a big deal so we touched down right only to find out that there's these these uh machine machines it's like a machine synth a synthetic race um known as the geth and they are they were killing a lot of people it was a whole thing. The whole place was under attack. And we were, we were just trying to get the get the beacon and get out. But it cut away, so Nihilus was down there. He was the other specter that was with us. We split off. And he went to go scout ahead. Try to get to the beacon first. Right? Now, when he got there, there was another... Another specter. Another Turian specter. Um, and... His name was Saren. And Nihilus knew who he was. Like, they recognized each other. And even Nihilus was confused on why he was here. He's like, when he, you're not supposed to be here. This isn't your mission. And Saren basically lied to him, saying, Oh, well, they thought you could, uh, they thought you could use some help on this one. And then he shot him in the back of the head. He betrayed him. It was awful. So not only did Nihilus die, which was really sad. But he uh this this Saren guy looked at the beacon, had some sort of vision, got some sort of knowledge out of it, and left in his huge ship. Right? And then by the time we arrived, we see Nihilus is dead, that is unfortunate. Uh Saren was gonna blow up the whole place. He put bombs everywhere. We defused them all luckily in time, but then uh, then, uh, where is it? You, Ashley. <laughs> Ashley decided to walk up to the beacon, and it started to, like, affect her, and us being the hero that we are. Shepard went, jumped, grabbed her, threw her out of the way, save her life, probably, and we took, we took the full force of whatever this beacon was putting out, and it has... It shoved visions inside our head. Don't know what they mean. Barely saw anything. They were very quick flashes. But it seems like it might be war. It might be death, destruction. Basically bad things. No idea what it means. <laughs> um, but unfortunately, immediately after receiving those visions, the beacon shattered. So not only does it look bad, for us, it looks bad for everybody. It looks bad for the whole, the whole, the captain, humans in general. Because apparently humans aren't very well respected by the other races. We're arrogant and growing too rapidly. So, it's not a good spot. It doesn't look good. Nihilus is dead. The beacon's destroyed. And and our best defense is, hey, I had a, a weird dream. So, <laughs> it's gonna be it's gonna be a. It's gonna be a wild, it's a wild start, but right now we gotta, uh, we gotta deal with this one. We're gonna talk to some people. Is yes, Commander. Is there something you need? Oh, we go talk around, get our get our legs back and everything, right? How did you end up serving on an Alliance ship? I enlisted right out of med school. Earth always seemed boring to me, too safe, too secure. I figured the colonies were teeming with exotic adventure. 
I wanted to travel the stars, tending the wounds of tough soldiers with piercing eyes and sensitive souls. <laughs> Turns out military life isn't quite as romantic as I'd imagined. But humanity needs the Alliance if we want to keep expanding through the Traverse, and the Alliance always needs good doctors. So I stayed on to do my part. Respectable. Nice. So, keep expanding through the Traverse. I'm going to pick up this terminology over time, right? It's still early on, but... So I wonder if the Alliance is the collective of all... The alien races and humans? Or is the alliance separate from that? And then there's the citadel. And they, they there was the term like citadel space, which I assume is the area, the section of space around the citadel. So instead of like, so the alliance is a, the, the people, right? And the citadel is a location. And the traverse means space. Just the way they describe space? Maybe? Probably? Ever think you made the wrong choice? Sometimes I think about opening a private practice back on Earth. Or maybe taking a position at one of the new med centers out in the colonies. But there's something special about working on soldiers. If I left the Alliance now, I'd feel like I was abandoning them. I understand. That's good. That's good on you for sticking around. What do you know about Captain Anderson? I've served with him for a few tours now. He knows when to let things slide and when to crack the whip. The crew knows he's seen pretty much anything they'll ever run into. And he cares about the people under his command. Not gonna lie, I I can totally see that. I can, because the way... I was expecting the captain to be pissed. <laughs> when, we, when we were gonna tell him, yeah, when we broke the beacon, um, and Nihilus is dead, but he was just like, "Hey, I'll back, I'll back you up. I will, I will back up your story." And I'm like, "Wow, nice, Captain. Thanks. Good guy." How well do you know the lieutenant? I'd never worked with him before this mission, but he has an impressive service record. Over a dozen special commendations. Tends to oh, keep wow. to himself though. Maybe because of the headaches. It's not easy being an L2. L2? Is that his rank? What does that have to do with it? Well, most biotics now use the L3 implants. Lieutenant Alenko was wired with the old L2 configuration. Sometimes there are complications. Oh, oh yeah, he's he has biotic powers. He has the abilities. Interesting. So, so he's his configuration is what outdated technically. What kind of complications? Severe mental disabilities, insanity, crippling physical pain. There's a long list of horrific side effects. Caden's lucky. He just gets migraines. I mean, comparatively, yeah, migraines aren't that bad compared to the rest of that, but migraines are are bad. But, yeah, the whole crippling physical pain, insanity. Like, good lord. Um... Okay, I don't think there was, yeah, there wasn't anything else. I should go. Goodbye, Commander. You know, I really like that we can talk to a lot of the people. It's very cool, and it fleshes out, fleshes out things. Big fan. Hey, Caden, you doing okay? Glad to see you're okay, Commander. Glad to see you're okay, Commander. <laughs> you too. You too, especially. That was rough. That was a rough time there. So, it's good you're doing okay. Oh, are these like... Cryo? Like cryo sleep? Is that what this is? Maybe? Okay, can't talk to you guys. That's fine. Okay. What do we got here? Just the table? Okay. So we'll go. We'll go this way. Look at that. This is... Really cool. This you can really feel the the size of the size of the ship. Oh, it's only a few areas. It's still. I'm glad you're okay, Commander. Losing Jenkins was hard enough on the crew. Yeah, yeah, I feel bad about that one. Not gonna lie. Okay, hold on. 
Uh, well, yeah, let's just look at this. Nav manual. Okay, we picked it up. <laughs> Got some experience for it, so that's good. Is this supposed to be in here? Maybe. FTL comlink. But added to our codex. Okay, so real quick, let me take a second. Look at this codex. So this codex is like everything we're collecting. Just like information-wise. Oh. Ago, the were in to rely on okay. Real, real. I'm going to. Good lord, that was really. Couldn't hear anything. Roughly 1,200 yep. years ago, the Turians were invited to join the Citadel Council to fulfill the role of galactic peacekeepers. The Turians have the largest fleet in Citadel space, and they make up the single largest portion of the Council's military forces. As their territory and influence has spread, the Turians have come to rely on the Salarians for military intelligence and the Asari for diplomacy. Despite a somewhat colonial attitude towards the rest of the galaxy, the ruling hierarchy understands they would lose more than they would gain if the other two races were ever removed. Turians come from an autocratic society that values discipline and possesses a strong sense of personal and collective honor. There is lingering animosity between Turians and humans over the First Contact War of 2157, which is known as the Relay 314 incident to the Turians. Officially, however, the two species are allies, and they enjoy civil, if cool, diplomatic relations. Okay, this is cool. This is cool. This is actually pretty cool. And the fact that it reads it to you, that's amazing. So, it's 1,200 years ago. The Turians were invited to join the Citadel Council, so this... This has been going on for a while. I'm curious when the humans got involved, or if this is it. Are we... Are the humans part of the Citadel Council? Because this... The Alliance and the Council now seem like two different things. This is just another way to say, or is the Alliance like an alliance of humans? I don't know. I mean, obviously, I see down here, Humanity and the Systems Alliance. I'm sure we'll figure that out. <laughs> so. Definitely want to read all these at some point. Definitely. I don't know how long it'll... I don't want to spend, like, the whole... If it's going to take a minute. I'm going to kind of spread it out across several episodes going through these. Because I do definitely want to get all the information. Because this is fascinating. Like, genuinely. 50,000 years ago, the Protheans were the only spacefaring species in the galaxy. They vanished in a swift galactic extinction. Only the legacy of their empire remains. They are believed to have built the mass relays and the Citadel, which have allowed numerous species to explore and expand throughout the galaxy. Prothean ruins are found on worlds across the galaxy. While surprisingly intact for their age, Functioning examples of Prothean paleo technology are rare. Time and generations of looters have picked their dead cities and derelict stations clean. Some believe the Protheans meddled in the evolution of younger races. The Hanar homeworld of Kaje, for example, shows clear evidence of former Prothean occupation. The presence of a former Prothean observation post on Mars has caused a rebirth of interventionary evolutionists among humans. These individuals believe the god myths of ancient civilizations are misremembered encounters with aliens. <laughs> That's interesting, interesting point. God myths and ancient civilizations are just misremembered encounters with aliens. Because the whole thing is they... Um, the captain mentioned it briefly before we touched down into Eden Prime, was that uh, the discovery of Prothean tech on Mars is what basically shot humanity to where we are now in space and all this so it's uh it is incredible what protheans well did were capable of doing and how long they how long they were here and how long it's been since they've been gone it's kind of crazy uh 
So, the non-council races. The Geth are a humanoid race of networked AIs. They were created by the Quarians 300 years ago as tools of labor and war. When the Geth showed signs of self-evolution, the Quarians attempted to exterminate them. The Geth won the resulting war. This example has led to legal, systematic repression of artificial intelligences in galactic society. The oh. Geth possess a unique distributed intelligence. An individual has rudimentary animal instincts, but as their numbers and proximity increase, the apparent intelligence of each individual improves. In groups, they can reason, analyze situations, and use tactics, as well as any organic race. Geth space is located at the trailing end of the Perseus arm, beyond the lawless Terminus systems. The Perseus Veil, an obscuring dark nebula of opaque gas and dust, lies between their space and the Terminus systems. Okay, so that's why it's called a veil. It's obscuring. Opaque gas and dust. Fascinating. So, so the Corians actually created them. And they started to, you know, evolve on their own. They were so advanced, they began evolving. And the Corians tried to stop that. They would knock that shit off. But it didn't work. And they actually won the war. The, the Geth actually won the war. Which is terrifying. Because <laughs> they are AI, but they're super intelligent. And the fact that they can self-evolve is incredibly crazy. So... The, the This here, though, the systematic repression of AI in galactic society. So, so no one uses AI, or they try not to. Or Because it's not saying it's repression. I don't know if that means it's, like, banned. So, like, the ship isn't run on an AI. None of our, none of our tech is run by AI. Because of this situation. It's pretty smart. It's a good idea. <laughs> After the Geth secure a location, they round up and impale dead and living bodies on mechanical spikes. The spikes rapidly transform these victims into withered husks, extracting water and trace minerals, and replacing them with cybernetics. Oh. The cybernetics reanimate the lifeless flesh and tissue, transforming the bodies into mindless killing machines. Some Alliance soldiers refer to the husk-generating spikes as dragon's teeth. A reference to the mythological berserkers who sprang up from the earth wherever the teeth of the dragon Eris were planted. Dragon's teeth and husks bear little resemblance to other pieces of Geth technology. No one is sure why a synthetic race would bother to drain the minuscule amount of recoverable resources from organic corpses, though the value of reusing them as shock troops is obvious. That is, uh, that is terrifying. Okay, so that makes sense. Because I was wondering... How did they do that? So the spike. So by putting the body on the spike, that's what it does. So it literally just sucks everything out of them and then replaces them with the cybernetics. That's, it's haunting. That's, that's crazy. That's insane. Okay. Uh... I mean, I get we're already here. We might as well learn about the Citadel and galactic government. The Citadel is an ancient deep space station, presumably constructed by the Protheans. Since the Prothean extinction, numerous species have come to call the Citadel home. It serves as the political, cultural, and financial capital of the galactic community. To represent their interests, most species maintain embassies on the Presidium, the Citadel's inner ring. The Citadel Tower in the center of the Presidium holds the Citadel Council Chambers. Council affairs often have far-reaching effects on the rest of the galactic community. Five arms, known as the Wards, extend from the Presidium. Their inner surfaces have been built into cities, populated by millions of inhabitants from across the galaxy. The Citadel is virtually indestructible. Oh. If attacked, the station can close its arms to form a solid, impregnable shell. For as long as the station has existed, an enigmatic race called the Keepers has maintained it. That is badass. <laughs> That's so cool. So, okay, so the Citadel 
it's not just a I mean it is a place but it's like a city it literally not only does the council exist there but uh, people live there there's a community millions of people live on this thing that's awesome and the fact that it's virtually indestructible is also impressive and the fact that it can like collapse that's wild the keepers fascinating that's 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 pretty cool not gonna lie citadel seems pretty rad Spectres are agents from the Office of Special Tactics and Reconnaissance and answer only to the Citadel Council. They are elite military operatives, granted the authority to deal with threats to peace and stability in whatever way they deem necessary. They operate independently or in groups of two or three. Some are empathetic peacekeepers, resolving disputes through diplomacy. Others are cold-blooded assassins, ruthlessly dispatching problem individuals. All get the job done one way or another, often operating outside the bounds of galactic law. Right. The Spectres were founded after the Salarians joined the Council. For many years, they operated in secrecy as backroom problem solvers. Only after the Krogan rebellions did their activities become publicized. Assignment of a Spectre is less contentious than a military deployment but makes it clear that the council is concerned about a situation. And that explains why everybody was pretty suspicious that Nihilus was with us. <laughs> it's like, why do we need a specter? This is supposed to be a really simple mission, right? So, there it is. That is interesting. So they, they only answer, answer <laughs> to the uh, Citadel Council. That's why they're above the captain. They don't have... They don't have, like, power, but they only answer to the council, but they can, they have the authority to deal with the situations they get in, and whatever they deem to be the correct way to handle it. And like it says, either you could be peacekeepers or cold-blooded assassins. All get the job done. That's all that matters, one way or another. Yeah, so the fact that uh, Saren is one of those, he has a lot of power, he has a lot of influence, a lot of access. Yikes. Humanity's first contact with an alien race occurred in 2157. At that time, the Alliance allowed survey fleets to activate any dormant mass relays discovered, a practice considered dangerous and irresponsible by Council-aligned races. When a Turian patrol discovered a human fleet attempting to activate a relay, they attacked. One human vessel survived, retreating to the colony of Shanxi. The Turians followed, quickly defeating the local forces. Shanxi was occupied, the first and to date only human world to be conquered by an alien species. The Turians believed the handful of ships they defeated represented the bulk of human defenses. So they were unprepared when the second fleet under Admiral Castany Drescher, launched a strong counter-offensive, evicting them from Shanxi. The Turians mobilized for full-scale war, oh, drawing the attention of the rest of the galaxy. The Council quickly intervened, forcing a truce. Fortunately for humanity, the first contact war was ended with a diplomatic solution. Okay, well, that answers some of my questions. Like, when did we find out about other alien species? The other alien races. 2157. Interesting. So they went to go look at these, these dormant mass relays. Then the Turians showed up and were like, no. <laughs> so that's why that's why human, humans and the other, the other people we talked to on the ship before we went to Eden Prime were kind of like, uh, kind of off about uh, Nihilus because he was a Turian. Probably because of this whole, the first contact war, the first impression was this. But we clapped back, got them on their way, but then the Turians were like, alright, they want to play, we'll play. And they, they mobilized for full war, <laughs> which probably would have ended terribly if the council didn't actually step in. 
Ish. <laughs> the Systems Alliance is an independent supranational government representing the interests of humanity as a whole. Ah. The Alliance is responsible for the governance and defense of all extrasolar colonies and stations. The Alliance grew out of the various national space programs as a matter of practicality. Sol's planets had been explored and exploited through piecemeal national efforts. The expense of colonizing entire new solar systems could not be met by any one country. With humans knowing that alien contact was inevitable, there was enough political will to jointly fund an international effort. Still, the Alliance was often disregarded by those on Earth until the first contact war. While the national governments dithered and bickered over who should lead the effort to liberate Shanxi, the Alliance fleet struck decisively. Post-war public approval gave the Alliance the credibility to establish its own parliament and become the galactic face of humanity. That answers a handful of my questions. <laughs> so, the council, the Citadel Council, is is completely separate than the Alliance. The Alliance is humans. It is humanity as a whole. <laughs> they represent, yeah, representing the interests of humanity. So basically, they're the face. To, to in the council, the Alliance is the representation of humanity to the other races. I understand. <laughs> And it took until the first contact war to, for them to be taken seriously. Okay. I want to look at these. I feel like we've been here long enough. We can look at them later. We'll look at the other ones later. It'll be cool. We got a lot to look at. So there's uh, there's no rush. No rush. I don't plan on skipping anything if I can avoid it. If I can avoid skipping things. I definitely will. <laughs> Everyone doing okay? Going great? Did you guys hear what happened down there? It was pretty bad. Not gonna lie. Good timing, Commander. I was just about to bring us into the Citadel. See that taxpayer money at work. <laughs> taxpayer money at work. It's a cool looking ship, I'm not gonna lie. It's... Oh my god. Holy shit, that's. That is enormous. Okay, so that picture was actually of the Citadel. Holy crap. Look at the size of that ship. The Ascension, flagship of the Citadel fleet. Well, size isn't everything. Why so touchy, Joker? Whoa. I'm just saying you need firepower, too. Look at that monster. Its main gun could rip through the barriers in any ship in the Alliance fleet. Uh, Good yeah. thing is on our side, then. Citadel Control, this is SSV Normandy, requesting permission to land. Stand by for clearance, Normandy. That is insanely huge. You may begin your approach, transferring you to an Alliance operator. Roger, Alliance Tower. Normandy out. Normandy, this is Alliance Tower. Please proceed to dock 422. And this music, it's great. This is impressive. <laughs> Holy shit. Wow. This, this is what is it is. This is an outrage! The Council would step in if the Geth attacked a Turian colony? Uh-oh. The Turians don't found colonies on the borders of the Terminus systems, Ambassador. Humanity was well aware of the risks when you went into the Traverse. What about Seren? You can't just ignore a rogue specter. I demand action! You don't get to make demands of the Council, Ambassador. Citadel Security is investigating your charges against Seren. We will discuss the CSEC findings at the hearing, not before. Oh, good. Great. Captain Anderson, I see you brought half your crew with you. Just the ground team from Eden Prime, in case you had any questions. I have the mission reports. I assume they're accurate? They are. 
Sounds like you convinced the Council to give us an audience. They were not happy about it. Seren's their top agent. They don't like him being accused of treason. Yeah, I'm sure. However, he did. <laughs> like, oh my god. He's dangerous. It's the truth. They're blind. <laughs> it's the truth. Saren's a threat to every human colony out there. If they don't stop him, I will. Settle down, Commander. You've already done more than enough to jeopardize your candidacy for the Spectres. The mission on Eden Prime was a chance to prove you could get the job done. Instead, Nihilus ended up dead and the beacon was destroyed. That's Saren's fault, not his. Yeah. Then we better hope the CSEC investigation turns up evidence to support our accusations. Otherwise, the Council might use this as an excuse to keep you out of the Spectres. God damn it. Come with me, Captain. I want to go over a few things before the hearing. Shepard, you and the others can meet us at the Citadel Tower, top level. I'll make sure you have clearance to get in. Politics. <laughs> and that's why I hate politicians. Uh, yeah, right. <laughs> there it is. Ah, uh, god damn it. Of course. Also, god damn. This is... This is cool. Like, wait a minute. That's not even a real sky. I just realized that. That's... Yeah, because we'd be in space. This is inside the Citadel. This is... Okay, this is way... This is... Yeah, okay, yeah. Understood. This place is impressive. I see why I talked it up so much. And it's indestructible. And it can actually fold in. That That's cool. I can't tell the aliens from the animals. Big place. That's right. Big place. It is. That's right. Oh, boy. Well, of course, I'm not particularly surprised that they're trying not to really take into account that Saren might be lying or actually being rogue gone rogue. Okay. Shit. There we go. Lines Patrol report. Captain Hendrickson reported some unusual energy readings during a patrol of the Argos Row cluster. She had particular concerns about the Hydra system, but was recalled before her team could investigate further. No patrols are scheduled for the sector. Do you want to send in a recon team? Well, that seems suspicious, doesn't it? Concerns about the Hydra system, but just as she's about to look into it, they're like, no, get back here. Don't look at it. Huh. Interesting. Suspicious. Vicious. But then again, it's probably, you know, we did have to hack into it, so it's probably all all classified, you know, usual. I understand what you're saying, but these allegations are very serious. I can't just... This is serious. My reputation is at stake. I spoke with the consort in confidence, and her alone. And she betrayed that confidence. All right. I will look into it for you. In the meantime, do not do anything rash. What did I walk into? What is happening? There's a, is there a situation here. Earth Clan, you are in the wrong place, I think. Your ambassador is next door in the large office. Chastising remark. Don't be so rude, Dan. At least introduce yourself. <laughs> <sighs> I am Din Korlak, Volus Ambassador. Is there something I can do for you, Earth Clan? Earth Clan? Din Korlak, Volus Ambassador. What is this place? You are in the embassy for the Volus and the Elcor. Your ambassador is next door, in his own office. In this shared space, I aid my fellow Volus, when I'm not being interrupted. You have to wear that suit to survive? Is that... 
That, does everyone have that? I'd like to know more about the Volus. I'm sure our history and culture would bore you, Earth Clan. I don't know about that. Actually, I would like to know more about your history. My people came to the Citadel shortly after the Asari and Salarians had discovered it. We were instrumental in establishing a standardized galactic economy. However, despite our long association with the Citadel and our many contributions to galactic society, we still do not hold a seat on the Council. I feel that. I feel for that. I wonder why. Why they don't let you guys have a seat on the council. Hmm. But the way you said it, they, before, that the, was the Citadel discovered? So it wasn't create, well, it was created. It was probably Prothean, right? Probably. But, interesting. Tell me about Volus culture. We are tribal by nature, but our ways are not violent. We barter and trade our lands and tribe members in order to increase status. Larger tribes often engulf smaller ones and eventually split again. Our society is very malleable, and our government is always shifting and changing. Since we're not physically adept, we trade our services for protection. Understandable. So, hmm. Okay. What is it you do here? I look out for the best interests of the Volus people. No easy task considering how often we are overlooked by the council. Chastising rebuke, Din. The council favors your species greatly. You are naive. The Earth Clan will be invited to the council long before our species will. Damn. They really don't care for you guys that much? Why aren't the Volus or Elcor part of the Council? All species must prove themselves before they join the Council. All but the Earth Clans, it would seem. Dismissive. Ignore the Volus Ambassador, human. He is incorrect in his assessment. Really? <laughs> How long have we been waiting? How long do you think we'll continue to wait? Bah, this talk is wasted on the humans. Bah, this talk is wasted. <laughs> I mean, like, that that sucks. I agree. I feel it. I mean, say the talk is wasted on humans. Like, like it's not our decision. It was up to, I mean, I don't know. It's beyond us. <laughs> Why so cranky? You seem to have a bit of a chip on your shoulder, Din. You humans are new to the Citadel, and yet the Council has granted you great favor. <sighs> Alright. Chastising rebuke, Din. Understandable. Your species has always been granted many concessions. Volus territory has expanded tenfold since coming to the Citadel. <clears throat> Details. We still have no real say in the decisions that affect Citadel space. So, so, so they got their their territory has expanded vastly, but they're upset because we we get some additional. I don't want to say like privilege, but like I I don't know. We're we're held up a little bit higher than them. Goodbye, Ambassador. Yes, yes. Good day, Earth Clan. Good day. It's cool meeting the other, the other race. I mean, this is the only one we've met so far, aside from the Turian. But please, greeting, human. It is always <laughs> good to see your kind. I am Ambassador Kalen. Genuine query: Is there something I can do for you this day? I love these guys. The way they talk. Why do you explain what you're about to say? Our people communicate less through words and more through scent and slight movements. Plainly, 
We discovered our vocal expression was not enough to convey the feelings of our conversations to other species. Why do huh. you bother, Kaelin? These Earth Clan don't really care about our ways. Remorseful response, Din. You don't truly believe that. And if you do, I am very sorry for you. Damn. God. <laughs> uh. Alright, Din. I actually do care. Thank you. Alright, I'm very interested. This is fascinating. That's cool. So they, they realized... Speaking wasn't enough to convey things between other races, so they they actually developed through to communicate through scent and expression. That's interesting. Tell me more about your species. Genuine enthusiasm. I delight in telling the history of my people. It is agreeable to share our culture with others. Great. Tell me about the history and origins of the Elcor. The Elcor were just beginning to explore Council space when the Asari first made contact with us. With their help, we discovered the relay closest to our system, and from there the Citadel. Proudly, within one lifetime we established a regular route to the Citadel and quickly became one of the more active species living on this great station. Oh wow. Within one lifetime. Hell yeah. <laughs> I'd like to know more about the culture of the Elcor. Frankly, we Elcor prefer the safety and familiarity of our own colonies to the confines of space travel. Our society is built on small, tight-knit groups. Though we are always welcoming to outsiders, our government tends to be very stable. Our people are not very comfortable with sudden changes. I can understand. Government tends to be very stable. Sudden changes? Understand. It's, it's cool that they're actually willing to talk about their, uh, their history and everything. Talk about them, their, their own race and stuff about them. What do you do here? Modestly. I work to bring the problems and the requests of the Elcor groups to the attention of the Council. Ha! They only give us these positions to keep us quiet. The Council doesn't care about our races. Chastising rebuke. Your tone is inappropriate, Dan. This human is not to blame for your malcontent or your misconceived suspicions. <laughs> I, I love it. It's just, I love chastising rebuke. Din, Din, come on now. I'll contend to misconceive suspicions. Goodbye, Ambassador. Sincere farewell. Good day to you, human. Enjoy your time on the Citadel. I intend to. This is great. I mean. I'm sorry, everything is so frustrating, but hey. Hello there, human. Sincere apology, but I am here on business and cannot be distracted right now. Oh, I'm sorry. Proceeds to distract him. You seem distressed. Is there something I can do to help? Alarmed response. You overheard that, did you? This is all going so wrong, and it is the Asari consort's fault. She's the one who started all this. Huh? What happened? What did this Asari do to get you so upset? I cannot speak more about this problem. It is too sensitive. Suffice it to say, she has compromised my authority as a diplomat. Uh, that seems like a pretty big deal. Where can I find this Asari consort? She is across the bridge from here. Her offices are easy enough to spot. Good day, human. Good day, human. Okay. Guess we can go over there. Whoa, look at you, legs. What's up? Hi. Hello. That's... That's cool. <laughs> okay. All right. 
We really are in like space space. Like this is some like real <laughs> some real shit. Cool. I love it. Open the door. What we got? Wow. This place is really neat. That's embassy receptionist. Zavina. Welcome to the Presidium. Allow me to be your guide. Um, maybe. Oh, you're cool. What's up? Okay, talk to you. That's okay. Receptionist. Good day, Commander. The human ambassador is up the stairs, first room on the right. Great. You know who I am? Yes, I receive reports on all newly arrived dignitaries and notable people. Oh, all right, cool. Great. What is this place? Impressive. This is the Presidium. More specifically, you are at the Citadel Embassies. If you have more questions, please access Avena. Who is Avena? What's that? Oh, well, it's a hologram oh, thing. Avena is the virtual guide for the Citadel. Feel free to access the terminal yourself. Cool. Will do. What's your name? What do you do here? My name is Sephiria. I'm the administrative assistant for the embassies. Sephiria. That's a nice name. You seem to be distracted. The embassies are the hub of all Citadel politics. <laughs> when you represent trillions of citizens, it tends to get a little busy. <laughs> trillions. That's a... That's a lot. I should be going now. Have a pleasant day. You have a good day too. Oh, that's so nice. These uh oh, so nice here. The Presidium. Allow me to be your guide. Greetings and welcome to the Presidium. My name is Avina, and I am pleased to be your virtual guide throughout this level of the Citadel Space Station. Cool. Are you real? Virtual guide, no thanks. Are you real? So are you a person or a program? I am a fully interactive virtual intelligence. Program to provide spontaneous guidance at predetermined locations of interest throughout this level of the Citadel. I may also be contacted through any of the Presidium VI terminals, should you require assistance. It's interesting that it's virtual intelligence, which I imagine would be different than artificial intelligence, which we had learned was not a great thing that people want due to the whole Geth situation. So I wonder if that's thing or is she or am I just reading into it like too much give me the tour you are standing at Presidium Tourism Terminal 1 on either side of this lobby are the embassies of the various Citadel races along with CSEC headquarters on the far end of this level you can see the Citadel Tower where the council meets regularly to discuss matters of interstellar importance cool okay so that, that you're giving us the war, runaround, nice. Not the runaround, but the layout. I want to know more about Citadel Security. Citadel Security serves as law enforcement for all regions of the Citadel, though the majority of officers serve in the wards. Executor Palin, a Turian, is the current head of CSEC, but individuals from virtually every species across Citadel space serve as officers beneath him. If you wish to learn more, Executor Palin's office is located in the CSEC headquarters just across the lobby. Okay, so Palin runs this place. <laughs> the embassies. There's a lot of information. There's a lot of... It's not so much a lot of reading, but it's a lot of listening. Which I'm into. It's a lot. This is, this is great. Tell me about the embassies. Each species in Citadel space important enough to be consulted on matters of galactic politics maintains an embassy on the Presidium. The Volus were the first non-council species to be granted an embassy, roughly 2,384 galactic standard years ago. As Citadel space has expanded, more embassies have been added. The most recently added embassy belongs to your own species, humanity. It was added 19 galactic standard years ago, despite some rather vocal opposition. There we go. Lore. More of it. So, galactic standard years. That's interesting. Because obviously, we measure years on Earth by the, the rotation of the planet around the sun and everything. So, 
a year on Earth is different than Mars, different than everywhere else. So a galactic standard year would be obviously a universal measurement of time. So 19 galactic years ago sounds relatively recent, all things considered. And humanity was the newest addition to to this. So that's cool. Interesting. And yeah, rather vocal opposition, I can imagine. Seems to be the case. Seems to be that the other races do not really uh, trust or want humans. Why were people trying to keep my species out? Some species felt humanity was given preferential treatment. It often takes a century or more before a new species is granted an embassy. The Council gave a great deal of thought to this matter. In the end, they decided humanity's impact on Citadel space was significant enough to warrant an embassy. Damn. Okay, that makes sense. Wow. We, re we really jumped to the front of that line. That was a, lo that was a long time. Wow. Damn. But, yeah, it makes sense, right? The Council thinking about how humanity's impact on space would be. I mean, probably, probably especially since we discovered the the whole Mars thing was probably a big part of it. Do you agree with their decision? I am not programmed to make that kind of qualified judgment. My code is limited to information and simple interaction simulations. Here we go. <laughs> uh, why was humanity opposed? Why were the Volus first? How come the Volus were the first species given an embassy? In the early years following the formation of the Council, the Volus were, apart from the Asari and Salarians, the most populous and widespread species in Citadel space. They established many new colonies and trading outposts, and they petitioned the Council for a greater role in determining interstellar policy. In recognition of their work to expand interstellar trade and establish a standardized galactic economy, the Volus were granted an embassy here on the Citadel. Uh, oh, that, yeah, all right, that makes sense. But just an embassy? Why weren't they made a council race? The council races have extensive responsibilities. They must provide personnel and ships for the Citadel fleets. Ah. They often provide economic aid in times of disaster. It would be unfair to demand such an enormous burden of a species unable to meet these obligations. The embassies allow lesser species to have a voice on the Citadel. I see. So, because of the obligations... So you can have an embassy. Which is like, great, you're part of this whole thing. However, to have a seat on the council, that is an enormous responsibility. Like, just, just having... Just needing to provide aid in situations and, you know ships and all that and if they can't provide those things then it's like can't be on the council because it's kind of part of the responsibilities you know so it makes sense why at why the humans would want to be on the council because they would they're they could do that right but it's interesting they refer to them as lesser species though like that seems a little condescending. That's pretty damn arrogant. I apologize if my personality has offended you. Please submit all formal complaints in writing to the Citadel Tourist and Visitor Board. <laughs> it's like, I'm sorry. Please. Please leave a... Please send a complaint. Goodbye. Goodbye, and thank you for using Avena. Please enjoy your visit to the Citadel. That was that was a lot of information. So goddamn and I know we got we got even more to go. <laughs> there's there's could be so much information. Oh, we we are just barely showing up here. Oh, another Turian. Hello. I know, sorry. Very close. So so cool. So diverse. To CSEC Academy. Oh, they have the arrows here, so in case, you know, you don't know. 
Citadel Tower is the tall white structure far off to the right. It houses the council and is the heart of the Citadel politics. Can we see it from here? Probably not. Use Citadel Rapid Transport to quickly... To travel quickly between locations. Okay. Which is this thing. Citadel Rapid Transport. Okay. Uh... Which we could go there. We could also go up this way. Which is what we're supposed to do. This is what they want us to do. Does that mean we should? Do we have a map? We do. Oh my god, we do have a map. Yo. Oh my god. Oh my god, this is... This is a lot. <laughs> it's not crazy big, but it's still like... That's a, a lot going on here. Okay, is there a way... I can see... There like quests? This journal? Yep, there we go. Okay. We have missions. I suppose Saren go to the tower. And then unusual readings. Go to the Hydra system in the Argos Row Cluster and investigate. Oh, we picked that's the thing we picked up in the on the computer. That actually is a as a side quest? That's cool. Nice. Okay. Nice. Cool, 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 cool. So do we... Well, she said... She said to go up here. Go up to the... Up the stairs. So we're gonna go... We're gonna go here first. Right? Because I... We didn't come from here. Oh. Everybody's here. Hello. I can't believe I landed a job here. This place is fantastic. <laughs> that it seems to be. Diplomatic archive. Okay. We got more stuff for the codex. Codex. We're gonna have to look at the codex at some point. Two more. More codex and experience points. Great. Elcor Diplomat. Hello. Human, delighted, welcome. It is good to meet you. <laughs> it is good to meet you, too. Great. These guys are just... They're doing their thing. Okay. Okay. Cool, 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 cool. We've been there. Let's go over here. What do we... What do we got? Oh. There he is. So we're gonna go, we're gonna look around in here first. Before we, before we go on. Everyone's hanging out. This is, uh, this is cool. Don't believe the rumors. The consort would never reveal her secrets. Of course she wouldn't. She'd be tossed out the nearest airlock if she did. Uh, I suppose. Besides, Nick, the consort's nothing like the girls back on the colonies. <laughs> she's, she's... You don't have to do it with her. You can just talk to her if you want. Is that all you did, Jazz? Just talk? I didn't say that. Ha! I bet you did too. Oh my god. What do you want? <laughs> oh, Commander. Yeah. Is there something I can do for you? Relax, Private. This isn't an inspection. Right. Sorry. What can I do for you, Commander? <laughs> consort. What can you tell me about the Asari Consort? I, uh... Well, she's an Asari who works here as... That is, she helps people with... things. You never want to see her, did you, Fredericks? I, uh, no, I never did. Uh, I couldn't afford it. It costs half a year's credits just to go in and talk to her. That's a lot. Can you at least tell me where I can find her? Sure. She's across the bridge from the embassies. Thanks, kid. Have fun. Try not to get into too much trouble. I will. <laughs> Have fun, that is. I will. Have fun, I mean. Yes, sir. All right. Wow, look at that. That's cool. Okay. Asana? I don't have time to talk now. I'm very busy. Okay, I understand. I can tell. Super busy. Bartender. Hello, Commander. Can I get you something? 
Why not? What have you got? Information, mostly. Would you like to know about some points of interest nearby? <sighs> Fill me in. What's going on around here? Well, you found the embassies. Not much going on here. Across the bridge, you'll find the bank, the Emporium, and Shaira's. If you haven't heard of her, you soon will. If you need supplies, you can try the markets one level below. For entertainment, I'd try Flux or Cora's Den. Hmm. Interesting. For entertainment. Supplies, there's a market below us. Then entertainment. Flux and Cora's Den. What are those? What is Shaira's? The consort? Uh, she entertains clients who can afford her services. Most of the diplomats and ambassadors have visited her at one time or another. She's a very powerful woman, but also very respected. Okay. Shaira's. <laughs> Sounds like a place. Some, I mean, obviously, consort we should see at some point, probably. Tell me about Flux and Cora's Den. Well... Flux has gambling and dancing, certainly more lively than this place. Cora's Den, on the other hand, well, let's just say it's livelier and deadlier, all at the same time. Oh, God. <laughs> that sounds exciting. Goodbye. Oh, <laughs> goodbye. So long, Commander. Have a pleasant day. You have a pleasant day, too. Yeah. There's one on every single one of those. They're hogging all the computers. Jeez. This place seems strange. I wish there were more humans around. I understand. <laughs> well, I mean, also, you could also try to hang out with other, you know, not just humans. But then, then also the, the reception of humans hasn't been great, so it's also like... If you try, they probably aren't like, oh, yeah, totally. Hang out with us, bro. Let's go. <laughs> Oi. Okay. All right. Here's what we're going to do. We're going to pick this up in the next episode. We're going to talk to Palin on the next one. So thank you everybody so much for watching. Or Mass Effect. Or lore. More. Everything. Maybe some action. Who knows? We'll see. We're still setting up a lot of the... We're still in the setup phase of what's going on. Saren's out there doing his thing. And now we're just trying to convince them that he's doing that thing. They don't believe us, probably. So uh, it's gonna be it's gonna be a bit of a it's gonna be a bit of a thing. So let me know what you think. Thanks again for watching. See you guys in the next video. Bye bye.